Okay, today we're going to be doing the lecture for Monday, um, which is going to be June 14th. Again, I've got some dental surgery to, to get done, so I'm not going to be live in class on Monday or Tuesday, possibly not Wednesday. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and make the videos available uh, so you can watch those at your leisure. I'll go ahead and give out the programming assignment for the week, uh, the problem set. I've seen me working on that. Um, even though I may not be live on video, I'm still going to be around. I don't think I'm going to be in such bad shape that I can't uh, can't give you a, a text. So it should be OK. So you can certainly text if you have any questions or anything. OK, so the first thing we're going to talk about this week is going to be cues. OK, so we've had link lists. Remember link lists look like this. We've got the series of links to the nodes. OK, so that's a linked list. And then we've had the stacks, okay, which kind of look like this. As we put items in, they go to the bottom. Okay, so X is the last one in, but it's also the first one out, okay, which gives us the last in, first out, or a LIFO, okay. And again, all that you see is this top item on the stack, okay. We can implement the stacks either as an array or as a length list. Okay, so what we're talking about today is going to be a queue. Okay, the idea of a queue, we usually put this linear, linearly. Okay, and if you ever watch any British television, which I do a lot of, a queue is just a line. You know, you'll queue up at the movie theater. Okay, so in a queue, you have one part called the front. Okay, so say this is the, the door of the theater. Okay, and then this is the back. So as people arrive, they're placed at the current back, because when there's no one there, the first person is the front and the back. But as we go along, there'll be people added in this way, okay? But they're going to exit from the front, okay? So all we can see, all we can deal with is the first one in. The stack always sees the last one in. On a queue, all we see is the first one in, okay? So this is a first in, first out, OK? So <clears throat> there are lots of jobs that are going to deal with this, right? We're going to have anything that, um, like if, you, if you're dealing with jobs, uh, they're going to be processed. Then you want the job that came in first to be processed first, unless there are other kinds of factors, OK? And that's a priority key, which I think we talk about later, OK? So that's the general idea we're talking about here, <clears throat> okay? So again, we're going to add to the back and we're going to uh, withdraw from the front, okay? So we're gonna have some operations that we need to define here. We'll talk about these, okay? So these are the Q operations. Okay. The first one is initialize the queue. Okay. That'll initialize the queue to an empty uh, state. Okay. Whether it's a, a link list or a array, it doesn't matter. Again, this is going to be the ADP that we're developing here. So we're looking, working on the queue ADT. Uh, okay. And that's laid out for you on page 453 in the textbook, at least in my textbook. Okay. So we have the initialize queue function. We have the is empty queue, which will let us know again um, whether it's empty or not. Okay. We have an is full queue. And again, like before <clears throat> with the stacks, if we're if you're implementing it as a linked list, that will never be that's not something we use. Okay, we have a front, okay, which will return the front. Return the front item. Okay, so we have a back as well. So we can see the back typically. Okay, so this is going to return the last element. And we have to be able to see the back because we're going to be inserting at the back. Okay, so we never actually read from the back, but we have to know where to put the next thing. 
whether it's a next memory address, if we're doing like list or a next array position, okay? Then we have an add queue, which will again add an element to the back or rear. We have the delete queue, which is going to remove the front element. Okay. So just like before, uh, there, there's going to be some tests on whether things exist and, and all that stuff. Okay. So I think the next thing is to go through this ADT a little bit more in more detail. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pop up terminal window. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I've got a script there to get to the server. Okay, so I'm going to create a new one here. I'm going to call this Q ADT dot H. Okay. So we're going to, this is going to be templated. Again, there's no reason not to do the templated. And again, if you're still a little fuzzy on why we do this, it's we, we don't want to have to create uh, an ADT for integers and for doubles and for strings. We're going to template it so we can use all those. Okay. We are class Q ADT. Okay. And then for our public functions, this is our outward facing functions we're going to be able to get to. These are going to be pure virtual functions, again, because it's an abstract data type. So this is a virtual bool is empty Q constant function equals zero. Okay. Again, it's constant because we don't want to change the Q by asking whether or not it's empty. Uh, we have to be careful, like with stacks, that some of the things we do are going to be destructive. Since there's no way to get to all the elements, if we're going to just go through and print all the elements of a queue, we're going to have to delete, we have to destroy the queue. Okay. So we also have the virtual bool is front queue. Oh, sorry, is full. This is also constant equals zero. Again, to make it a pure virtual function, we have a virtual void initialize queue. Okay, that's not constant because we are going to change things potentially. Okay, we're going to have a virtual return a type, whatever type is. Front takes no parameters. So far, nothing's taken a parameter. Const equals zero. Okay, again, this is not destructive. It's going to return the first element. Okay. And it assumes that things are not empty. Okay. You have your virtual type back, const equals zero. That's going to return the last element. We have virtual void add queue. which is going to take a constant address of a type variable. I'm going to call Q element. It's also going to equal zero. And finally, we have another virtual function. Delete Q equals zero, okay, which will remove the first element of the queue, okay? Doesn't return anything. So again, if we want to return something, we have to use the front or the back, okay? Ideally, we'd use the front, okay? So if we're going to implement this um, in, in a file, again, being abstract means that once we create a child or a subclass of the superclass, okay, 
it means that we're going to have to implement, this is an obligation to implement all these functions in exactly the same way that we have. Okay. So let's leave that for a second and talk a little bit about how we're going to implement these in particular when it comes to an array. Okay. So however our array is, however big it is, okay, let me get this up here. However big things end up being, and there could be certainly more. Okay, wherever we're at, then at some point, like when we start, if there's something here, we have our Q front, it's going to have zero. It's pointing to this position, okay? And the Q rear also points to zero, okay? The front and the rear, a point, point here, okay? So that's after we've done one add Q operation. So we did an add Q, I don't want news. Go away. Okay, it's doing that. So we're adding to the Q an A. Okay. If we do a B and then a C, so this is another, so we're going to add, add Q like, before, like above, B and C. Okay, so we have the A is here. The B gets next to it. Again, we're adding at the end. The C is there. Okay. So the Q front is still zero, but the Q rear is now two. Again, because in arrays, zero, one, two. Okay. So if we were at this point to do a delete Q, Okay, so we're now going to do a delete Q. Okay, the front could have gotten us to the A and the rear could have gotten us to the C. But when we delete the Q, okay, all we're really doing is we're moving the front Q, which currently points there, to there instead. So when we're done, it's still going to look like this. We're still going to have our A, B, and C all the others okay but now the q front is going to point to a one okay so this is basically gone i mean it's still there but we're going to use that okay so we can keep adding things as long as we want um, we may hit an issue though i mean if we keep moving along there's always the problem here that let's say these here all have, so say our, our Q only has an E, a W, and a Q in it, okay? So the front is gonna point here, the back is gonna point there, <clears throat> okay? All these are random things, could be anything. They were part of the Q, now they're not. <clears throat> so at this point, the is full, Q is going to return true, okay, because we are full. But we have all of this space that's free, okay? So there's a couple of things that we can do here, okay? We can either look to see where the Q front is. So Q front in this case is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Q front's at 8. Q back is at 10. We can note this is an 8. And in essence, move everything back. So put the E there, the W there, the Q is there. And change the front to zero and the back to two. You can do that, okay? If, if you have small arrays, it's probably not too bad, okay? But if you have much going on, that could be a lot, a lot of wasted effort, okay? So what the book is going to assume, and, and we can assume it as well, although we're not gonna draw it that way, is that our Q is circular. there that just um, 
wherever we are, let's say we're at the E W Q over here. Okay. So this is the only place where we're actively part of the Q. Okay. So at this point, this is the front and this is the back. Okay. So unlike here where we're out of room, we can just keep adding all the way around the circle. Okay. Again, we're not deleting things as we go along. Um, that's, that's just an idea of how we're going to end up doing things. Okay. Um, so again, that allows us to add, uh, go back around to the front, probably have to do a mod operation there somewhere to make the numbers all work out. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to hit, this last thing we'll cover today, is going to be on, starting on page 459, it's going to be the implementation of the Q type itself, okay, for um, an array. Okay, so I'll go ahead and, and pop that up. We'll talk, type in, again, some of the code. Don't have to do it all. You have to do it all. I don't have to do it all. You don't want to see me type all that, okay? Am I really here? Yes. Okay. So let's call this one, um, what did we call it before? Uh, the linked stack. Um, just the link list. So we're just going to call this one Q. Call this Q dot H. Okay. Um, or Q type, I guess. Dot H. It's a header file as well. Okay. So I need to actually give it a name. Okay. So on this one, again, <clears throat> this is going to have to be templated. We'll start with there. Whatever type we want to send it. So we're going to inherit in a public way from the Q ADT of whatever type we're dealing with. Okay. So <clears throat> in this implementation, Let's uh, kind of skip to the end. We can add stuff back in. I always like to look at what we're storing here. So in our private section, we're going to have an int on the max Q size. Okay, like we did before on the linked lists. We have an int on the count. That's how many we have currently in it. We have an int on the Q front. Again, this Q front is going to be the index position. So all these things return the index position. You then have to go to the array to deal with it. Okay. We're also going to have the Q rear. Okay. And finally, we're going to have the actual array cult list. Okay. So that's what we're going to be dealing with as far as uh, the functionality here. Okay. So as far as the functions go for our prototypes, we have to start with, we have to have our public section. Okay. We're going to start with this constant Q type. And this is going to overload the assignment operator. These are the things we have to do every time that we're going to use pointers as data. So list is an array and array is a pointer. So that's why we have to do those, those things we always do. Okay. So I have the Q type um, operator equals constant Q type. Okay. So that's just going to allow us when we do an equals to end up with a deep copy, not a shallow copy. And then we're going to have our Boolean is empty Q, okay, which is a constant function. Boolean is full Q, also a constant function. Hopefully you're finding that by typing these in rather than cutting and pasting, you're going to end up getting a better feel for this. You can stop as you're going along. Oh, initialize Q is not a constant function. It's quite the opposite of a constant function. It's going to make a change to things. 
Okay. Return type on the front. Which is the constant function. We have a type back, which is the constant function. Okay. So and just so we're clear here, the Q front is an integer that points to the current address or the current position of um, the Q front. That'll be a number. That'll be a three, a one, a zero, whatever. Whereas this function um, here is going to return what's at that position. So it's going to use the Q front front wheel to return the array, the value in the array. That's why it's of type type. Okay. Okay. So we have the back. We have a void function. Add Q. <clears throat> add there, it's going to add to the back of the line. Okay, so again, these have preconditions. This one is the Q exists and it's not full. Okay, and the, the I'm not typing the comments in, but they're useful comments with the preconditions and the post conditions for these. If it's not abundantly clear to everyone that could be reading your code, what things are, are happening, then you really should put that in there. Okay, there's a delete Q, which is going to remove it from the front. Okay. We have the Q type constructor, which is going to set the int Q size by default equal to 100. You can always modify that if you needed to. Okay, then we have our um, copy constructor. the constant it doesn't change what you're sending in and finally you have the destructor okay so again the ones that we have to have because anytime again I can't say this enough anytime we have an array or a pointer, because an array is a pointer. We have to overload the equals operator, the assignment operator, okay? We have to have a copy constructor, and we have to have a destructor to free up the memory, okay? And I'm not, not gonna go through all of these functions. Uh, you'll wanna type those all in, but um, for example, the is empty queue just returns um, whether or not the count's equal to zero. The is full returns whether or not the count's equal to the max Q size. Those are pretty straightforward. Okay. Let's look at front. Okay. Because front is something we may want to end up doing sometimes. Okay. So down here, we're going to have template class type. Type Q type type. It's of type type. Okay. That's going to be our um, naming mechanism. That's the, so we're in the right namespace. Front constant. Again, it doesn't change anything, but it's going to return what's there. Okay. And so, but that is not a semicolon. It is brackets. Okay. So again, if there's a con if there's a constant up here on this front, which there is at the end, okay, it has to be a constant down here, or it's going to give us an error. They're not the same signature, okay. If I'm going to make a change here, I have to make a change in in the in that up, in that list up the front as well as the 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 ends. So you have it at both places, okay. So on the front, we're going to again do our assert. Uh, it, it, it includes the Q, the C assert. I didn't show you that, but it has to do that to use this. We've seen that before. The book doesn't show up, but it's got to be there. Okay. So we're going to assert that not is empty Q. Okay. So we're making sure there's at least one item there. And we're going to return the list. 
at that Q front position. Okay. So again, if you're dealing with integers, this is going to be a array of integers. Q front is going to point to that front position. Okay. Just this just returns it. Okay. The back's going to look very similar to that. Okay. So now let's look at the uh, add Q and delete Q. Okay. So look at the add Q. So for the add Q, again, we have a template class type. We avoid, we have to give the namespace. Q type type. Namespace there. Um, it's going to be the add Q. Okay. Constant function. It's going to take type reference new element. Okay, so again, we're making the assumption here that it's not full. Okay, so if that's not the case, we can't do it. We're going to hit the else instead. We're going to set the Q rear. It's going to be equal to the Q rear. Plus one. We're going to do the mod max Q size, okay, which is going to be what I was saying before. This is going to make our um, Q circular. Okay, So that's just going to go around the end if it needs to. Okay, We're then going to add one to the count. Then we're going to set the list at the new. Q rear be equal to the new element we're adding. Okay, that's going to take care of that for us. Else, we're going to have an error message. Let's see out. Cannot add to a full Q. And that. Okay. And then the delete queue is similar, but we're going to say if the queue is not empty, then we're going to do a count minus minus and then set queue front equal to queue front plus one mod to max queue size again just to keep that circular. Okay. Then let's look at the constructor. I think it's probably the last thing we need to look at here. So look at our constructor, constructor here. I'm on page 463 if your book looks like my old book. A class type. <clears throat> okay, so we have our namespace information, the Q type type. Q type is our constructor. It's going to take an int on Q size. Have an if Q size is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so basically we, we, we're, we're taking in Q size as a parameter. So we have to make sure that, that it's not negative. So it's basically like um, size must be positive. The book has a better, better error message, but you get the idea. Okay. And then we're going to set the max Q size, if they mess up, just like we did before on link list, equal to 100. That's kind of our default size. Okay. And then we've got an else in here. So if we're down here, we know that the max Q size, or the Q size that they're entering is okay. So we're going to let the max Q size be equal to the Q size they're sending in. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, then in either case, we're going to let the Q front be equal to zero. We're creating a new one, so we're starting over from there. We're going to let the Q rear be equal to the max Q size minus one. Count is equal to zero. And we're going to create our array here. So list is equal to new, new allocates memory type, max Q size. Okay, let's go in the constructor. Okay, and the copy constructor and overlying the assignment operator are things that are in the exercises. And I'm not sure if I'm going to give it to you or not. We'll have to see. Okay, so that's the basic idea here, right? So um, get this code in, get it working, do a simple example like we did before. Okay, so again, you have to have the abstract data type, that .h file. Then, then the, the second uh, one we're creating here, which is the one for a linked list, I'm oh, sorry, the one for an array has to include or has to derive from the first one, okay, the abstract data type, and has to implement all those functions, okay? So that's it uh, for this lecture today. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and release a bunch of them uh, today, uh, but this one will be for Monday, the next one will be for Tuesday, where we're gonna finish up the queues.